Sherman, Penny, why are you two dressed like ancient Greeks? I lost her in ancient Egypt. And I got engaged to King Tut. Then we ran out of gas. In ancient Troy. You used the way back. Yeah. He was into it. All right, Mr. Pooh Button Sherman. <laughs> oh, look at you. you. You got a little bit offended there because I know you love these cartoons, man. Well, it's sl slow your roll. What? I love the cartoons, but I ain't one like, come on, man. It's a piece of my childhood. Don't you step on it. We'll see about that. It, it's a cartoon. We'll see <laughs> about okay. that. We ain't gotten to the review yet. Okay. We'll see about that. Okay. We'll see if you got a little offended by this movie that we saw. Okay. If you, we'll see if you're Mr. Pooh Buddy and Sherman purist. I am not, and it's pronounced Peabody. <laughs> <laughs> what did I say? Peabody? Peabody. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know me. You sound like, you're talking about two guys sharing a urinal. <laughs> <laughs> my Peabody. Hey, that's pretty good, man. I like that. Mainly because you've been a Peabody in my before, so I know how you got that. <laughs> you know I'll fuck up a cartoon name in a minute. You do. <laughs> Morio. <a> second. Morio. <laughs> <laughs> Monsters. Monsters. M Monsters Inc. P Pikachu. <laughs> and Peabody. <laughs> now, we're going to test your knowledge here before we even get into it. Uh oh. <laughs> Who created me? Ah, uh, you know what? They said at the end of the movie. Uh, it's not Jay Ward. It was a different guy. Oh, it's not Jay Ward. No, it's part of the Jay Ward studio. I see. Ah. Uh -huh. At the end of the movie. And during the uh, end credits, it said characters created by, and it wasn't Jay Ward's Some name. Some dude. Okay. Yeah, it's a different guy. All right. Uh, you and I fucked up on this. <laughs> I thought I had some. I, I, I thought it was Jay Ward until I saw that at the end of this movie. And I was like, okay, fair enough. Now, here's the other thing. Do you know when the show premiered? Ooh, I don't. 65, 63? And I ask you this for a reason, because it premiered in November of 1959. Oh, 59. Damn. When you look at how early this premiered, it's kind of cutting edge humor for its oh, time. Very much so. Because you look back at the cartoons of the day, I mean, these were Saturday morning cartoons that had a very adult sense of humor. Not adult yes. as meaning crude or sexual, just more intellectual. No, no. And, and they, were, they, they, would, they, were, they were bad puns they used all the time, and yet they used them in an intellectual way. Yeah, it was, they, they were puns that kids wouldn't get. Right. It was humor <laughs> that wasn't crude. But kids wouldn't get this shit. Yeah, yeah, because uh, because I remember one of the one of Mr. Peabody's punchlines was it ended up being the uh, the uh, the the ruby out of Omar Khayyam, and that's a, <laughs> that's a book that no kid has ever read. Okay, I I must be a kid because I don't understand that shit. <laughs> Who <laughs> the Rubik's cube of cayenne pepper? What? <laughs> Now, you see how sophisticated that humor is? Yeah. Even my dumb ass can't get it. <laughs> right. Kids can even appreciate how, you, how, how young they were at the time, the banter between the characters, the rhythm. Right. Sort of that vaudeville comedic rhythm that was going on between yeah. the characters. I mean, it was, it, was it was delivery, too. Well, yeah. Well, it's an interesting, interesting thing you had going because you had the two characters, Sherman, the boy, mm -hmm. Mr. Peabody, the, the intellectual dog. And Mr. Peabody was sort of like the comedian and the straight man at the same time. And Sherman yes. was just kind of there to go, wait, why is that, Mr. Peabody? And here's the thing. Again, this is all set up for the review here. We're leading into this for a reason. What was also cool about it is that Mr. Peabody didn't give a fuck about Sherman, really. <laughs> he, he adopted Sherman. See, here's the story, people. In the cartoon, Mr. Peabody is a scholarly, super intellectual genius dog. Yeah. Smarter than the average human. So smart that he can invent time machines. Right. But he went out and adopted a boy. Right. Now, you're probably thinking he adopted a boy because he's a kind-hearted creature, too. No, he's an asshole. He got, <laughs> he got the most socially retarded kid he could find so he could feel superior. You know what I'm saying? I think maybe perhaps it was part of a grand experiment that he was like, <laughs> you know what? It, it wouldn't be a challenge to take a normal boy, <laughs> but to take one who was so socially inept and yeah. left alone. Now, that's something Peabody could do. He, he would be condescending to Sherman quite he often. He would be condescending as shit. And, and Sherman would just be as retarded as a motherfucker. <laughs> hey, Mr. Peabody! You know, and it was really like a dog and, and, and human relationship. Right, right. You know how dogs just eager to please? Uh -huh. hey, hey, where are we going today, Master? Hey, that was Sherman. Yeah. Hey, Mr. Peabody, where are we going today? And, and Mr. Peabody, you could tell when he got tired of that shit because he would right. always say, quiet, you. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> Sherman. A lot of people 
are going to wonder how true this movie is to this show. And that's why you have to bring all this stuff up because you have to keep in mind that this is a DreamWorks animated film. Yeah. So you got to wonder how much are they going to retain from that sense of humor that that show had. Honestly, like with the track record, the way, way these movies go and me watching the trailer, I just figured they weren't going to retain any of it. I figured like, yeah. you know what? They'll, they'll have a dog that looks like, <laughs> like Mr. Peabody yeah. and that's going to be it. And, you know, they're going to travel in time, do some Bill and Ted's excellent adventure shit. Exactly. And uh, just have a bunch of, you know, lame, uh, current, anachronistic jokes, and that'd be the end of it. Yeah. That, that, and you were right about that. That I was expecting the same thing. How much are they going to water this down? Mm-hmm. Now, I will say this much. I'm going to bring up a little, um, some, uh, just a little more history about the show because the, the, I, I watched a 10-minute episode, which was actually very true to the movie. Yeah, I didn't. I hadn't seen it before, and all the years that I'd watched these reruns, maybe I've seen it, but I don't remember it. In the, the ten minutes short, which is a setup for this uh, for this movie, so Mister Peabody is a dog that went to court and legally Adopted. was granted yeah. uh, the the right to adopt a human boy. Yeah, and the he he actually educates the boy by taking him back in time and showing him things. Now they expand on that in the movie, and so what we have here in the film. Is it's kind of the same thing, except just a little bit longer because they got an hour and a half to film. Right. So Mr. Peabody gets to adopt this boy. Okay, I adopted the kid. Let's go do some cartoon shit. Let's go do some adventures. Here, they bring up this issue of, now wait a minute, this is a fucking dog. <laughs> Can't, okay, I know you got the right to adopt this boy, but are you able to actually raise him now? Right. Peabody is kind of, he's still kind of a dick. Sherman says, I love you, Mr. Peabody. And, and Mr. Peabody like, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm all right with you, too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, he pulls a Han Solo on him. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but what happens here is that that question finally gets answered. They have, Well, it's like everybody's okay with it, but there always got to be one asshole. It's got to be one bitch who comes in. Miss Grunion. Miss Grunion hears a story about... Pe- about, about Sherman at school. Sherman, this is his first day in school. I told you the boy is social retarded. He's been raised by a fucking intelligent dog. Well, it's like all kids who are home uh, homeschool. Homeschool, yeah. He gets to school and he just knows everything. I mean, he's been back in time. When they ask about George Washington, he's like, shit, I met George Washington. Right. Let me, that cherry tree? That's bullshit. That's bull- that's bullshit. <laughs> that didn't happen. And he's, and he's, oh, 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 I know. Oh, he knows every answer. Of course, there's a girl in class. She didn't get out. I can't even blame her for being upset. She wants to. She wants to answer some questions. It's the first day. It's the first day. But, but it is like she answers the question, and that's what he's like. Well, actually, I, I met George Washington. Everything you're saying is wrong. <laughs> I can't really get mad at it because not only is he a know-it-all on the first day of class, but he fronted her out in front of everybody. Like He pretty much said, bitch, you wrong. I mean, he just pretty much just told her, you got it wrong, out in front of everybody in class. Just put her ass on blast. And she looked at Sherman and said... Yeah, motherfucker, I got you. So lunchtime, she says, "Hey, I heard you. Uh, so, so your father I heard he's a dog, and he's and of course he don't know no deer. Yeah, right. yeah, of yeah, course yeah. he don't see it coming. Right? She's like, well, you know what? Take this sandwich that you eat and eat fetch. that shit off the yeah, fetch. <laughs> eat that shit off the floor like the dog you are, because that makes you a dog too. They get into a fight. Sherman's he says, well, look, I don't want to hit this bitch. <laughs> yeah, like she's a girl. I'm trying not to. Just give me yeah. my sandwich back." Yeah, he don't want to hit her. He's like, shit, I ain't gonna, I, I'm, not, t- I'm not that dumb. You can't tell me you weren't thinking like, man, kick her ass. I was, but I was thinking the same thing. Like, she deserves, look, this is any time to hit a female. It's right now. I <laughs> yeah. mean, Sherman was kind of wrong, but it didn't deserve this. No. But Sherman said, you know what? I, I'm going to pick the best solution. I'm not going to hit her, but I'm going to bite the fuck out of her. <laughs> Hey, he learned from the best. <laughs> Learn from, and that's what happens. Miss Grunion comes over, who's voiced by uh, uh, Allison. What's her name? Allison Janney. Allison Janney. Yeah, she she comes over and she says, "I knew it." Yeah, she's like from Child Protective Services. Yeah, she's like, I I've been waiting on this. I know, I've been waiting on this day to just <laughs> fuck with this. Dog. She's unhappy. She's yeah. like, if there's any time to take a child away, it's from a dog. Yeah, she's like, yeah, uh huh. Oh, he, he bit that girl. I wonder where he learned that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what do dogs do when they get angry? <laughs> uh huh. And Mr. Peabody, he tries to make his case and everything, being so cool as to say, "Listen, I, why don't I just invite the parents of Penny? Uh-huh. And girl, the girl's name is Penny. Why don't yeah. I invite the parents of Penny over? Miss Grunya, you bring your big ass over here too, and I'll just right. I, I, I'm a wow everybody. I'm, I'm gonna impress everybody. I'm gonna I'm 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 make food you've never been able to eat because I'm a gourmet chef. I'm a, I'm a mixologist. 
I can dance. I can play musical instruments. Yeah. Everybody gonna have a good time. Yo, yeah, yeah. I mean, shit, he's a one-man club. Yeah. Not a, not a host. That motherfucker's a club. He can provide entertainment and make drinks and cook for you, too. <laughs> <gasps> Peabody, that was amazing. Paul, wasn't that amazing? I'm more into rock and roll. I meant flamenco. Bagpipes? Uh, didgeridoo. This has been great, but a complete waste of time. Now let's get Penny and go home! Are you all right, Paul? I'm fine. <laughs> Paul, if I might... Stay away from me, Peabody. Just get back. I need traction. You can trust me, Paul. I'm a licensed chiropractor. Ow! <laughs> Peabody, I feel great. I, I really feel great. Peabody, you're a miracle worker. Now the thing is, is that he tells Sherman, "Hey, you know your your, your friend is coming over." And yeah, he's like, "My pit- friend, he's on that that bitch Penny." <laughs> Man, what the fuck you do there? He's like, "Look, you want do you want to get taken away from me? You want your ass to get thrown back on the streets where I found you?" He said, "Just be cool with this, all right? I got it. Just do one thing for me. When she comes over here, you two stay away from my time machine." The Wayback Machine. Right. I, I just need you to do this one thing. Yeah. It seemed like that was written in a book somewhere. <laughs> where the, the authority figure told the other people, don't, don't, you can have everything, but just don't mess with this one thing. And they did that one thing. Yeah, if by... I, I can't if, remember which book that was. But anyway. If by Adam, you mean Sherman. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. And, maybe and if by it. Time Machine, you mean Apple. <laughs> yeah. And if by Bitch Snake, you mean Penny. <laughs> yeah, Penny comes over and says, I don't give a fuck with your dad. Say, he's a dog. Show me this shit. And he, you know, she, I know. And, you know, that is the thing. The, where she just totally bullies Sherman into taking her to it. Playing with his manhood, too. Yeah, playing so with his manhood. You do everything a dog tell you to do. <laughs> oh, really? Man, let's, 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 go, let's go back in time and fuck around. Come on. I mean, come on, man. I'm a, you know, and if you play your cards right out, you might get, you might know, get a little bit. You might get a little <laughs> love right here. You know? so, so, of course, they end up messing with the machine. Not only does uh, Peabody have to fix this whole thing of them messing around with the time-space continuum, but he has to try to keep things on track with Penny's parents and Miss Grunion, or else he's going to get Sherman taken away from him. Right. And he's like, I, I can't have that. I need somebody to fuck with around here. <laughs> Who's going to wash my car when Sherman is gone? Now, here's the deal about the film. It actually works on some levels of keeping that humor of the, of the show. Well, that's, that's what surprised me. I mean, like, with, with the opening it had, I was like, all right, here we go. Big action sequence. And I was like... All right, I have to begrudgingly admit I'm kind of liking this action sequence. This is this is actually going pretty well. Yeah, but okay, yeah, that 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 was fun. But now we get to the bullshit, and I was <laughs> shocked. I was like, this really does have the feel of the show. Like they didn't just take a big shit on it. They it it has it you know it has Peabody making those puns. It has them meeting the historical figures. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it certainly has more movement because the show was very limited animation, and it was like like this cartoon's like six minutes long. There's only so much you could do, yeah. with those constraints. Expanding it out into a, a ninety minute, you know, full on uh, CG animated cartoon is a lot. But the thing is, it shows you the difference between how cartoons were made for kids back then and now. Because mm-hmm. back then they would make stuff basically for adults, and the kids just had to play catch up with it. Yeah, and now these days, you know, everything is like really mapped out and spoon fed to the kids and you got focus groups making sure none of it's offensive and has to be you know very uh, <laughs> uh, short attention span theater to keep them interested this manages to walk the line between both well it does the, the see in the show you had improbable history yeah and what was what was great about the show is it, it is not landing on so thick and it's not pandering like today's in educational shows and yeah back then it was the show was kind of a history lesson but without going overboard with it. Right. I mean, they didn't try to get you ready for a quiz or a test or anything. <laughs> yeah. It's just like, hey, look, this is funny. We're gonna, we, most of we here to make you laugh. We're going to drop a few facts here and there. Uh-huh. But ain't nobody going to be real sticklers about this shit. Right. The, sh- the, the, the movie captures that from the very beginning when they go to the French Revolution. And it mixes. And what the sh- it, it Okay, let's just call it for what it is. You, you admitted it. The show looked like shit. 
<laughs> yeah. They didn't even try. Yeah, they, they, they didn't try. It was it was South Park before South Park right. came about. It's like <laughs> it, it, it really was a show where all the work went into the script and the, and getting the voice actors and then the animators had a week. <laughs> oh, that's it, man. Shit, they drew two arms and some mouths and then they said, work with that. I'm right. going on vacation. <laughs> Again? <laughs> And now the, this movie does what that show can only dream of doing at its time. It combines everything about the history, drops facts, yeah. But it combines it with great graphics and visuals here and there, and then it throws in this really incredible action scene. Uh huh. Where they, I know it sounds stupid, but Mr. Peabody and her and Sherman, they're about to get they're about to get beheaded, and they gotta get away through the sewers of France, <laughs> and they're, they're they're pretty much like surfboarding surfboarding through the water. I know you're trying to think, oh no, they're trying to do that that Mountain Dew. Uh, oh, to, oh, they're trying to do extreme, extreme sports. sports. It works. It does work. It does work. And that, that's something I always appreciate when one of these cartoons is able to do that and not go overboard to where you just feel like this is just filler. They're just wasting time. They're trying to put on a big flashy show. Oh yeah. They, they do it again when they go to ancient Egypt. It's like almost every time they had one of these these sequences, I was like, you know what? This is really well choreographed, and it works well. It does. It does. And throughout the movie, there are segments like that. They go back in history. They drop some facts for you. They put a real cool action scene with some nice CG in there. They got money now. Yeah. So they, they, and they use it. They're, I like that Ty Burrell, who does the voice of Mr. Peabody. Man. You Spot know, on. Yeah, that's the thing. Like When they announced this, I was like, look. David Hyde Pierce is the only person who's going to be able to be Mr. Peabody. <laughs> he was a live action P Mr. Peabody. <laughs> right, you know? right. But Ty Burrell really does it. Yes, he does. And because you know when it, when it first started, I was just like, yeah, I'm just hearing Ty Burrell. I don't know about that. And after a while, I forgot. I had to re- remind myself, like, oh yeah, this is not really Mr. Peabody talking right he now. He <laughs> captured everything you expect a little asshole dog to be. A dog that knows he's smarter than you. A little condescending ass dog. He gave him a little bit softer edge than the old cartoon. A little bit. And he did. He did. Because like I said, Mr. Peabody didn't give a fuck in that cartoon. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, if it was accurate, people would be like, man, man, I hate Peabody. <laughs> <laughs> Peabody is an asshole. Peabody would be that guy that people say, why did you invite him again? Right. <laughs> he don't even let anybody talk. He just knows every fucking yeah. thing, man. Uh, the kid who plays Sherman, Max Charles, does a great job. I mean, it was obviously an adult who did Sherman in the cartoon. Yes. Matter of fact, it's an adult who had that dis- that Benjamin Button's disease? Are you where, kidding? We had, no, him and um, God. Oh, I, I'm, I'm. Why am I blanking on the other actor's name? The other there's two two main actors mm-hmm. and who did a lot of voice work, uh, who had this disease. It's him and the other guy who did the voice of Ralph Phillips and Gumby. Oh, really? Yeah. Nice. You think I would know that? <laughs> I know. How much of a Gumby freak I am. <laughs> well, the, the Max Charles, obviously a kid, but. I think that works, man. I think today it works better having a kid. With, with the kind of story they did, because they, they did do something that was, you know, it it had it, it touched on your heartstrings. Yeah. And it, and it worked better to have a, a, an actual kid as Sherman. Yeah. And those two work well together. I like Sherman. I like, I, and even as much of an ass as Mr. Peabody is, I like that he has some pride in himself. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> they, no, you, no, you have to respect that. They, I mean, it'd be different if he was that way. But he was really like an idiot or, or wasn't as good as he thought he was. No, by, by, by about, it, it's, you know what? Fifteen minutes into the movie, I said, "I can't say shit to this dog," <laughs> right. and nobody in the theater can. He's smarter than everybody in this room, right? And I like, and they show you his backstory where he's rejected as, as a puppy. Yeah. So he just says, "You know what? I'm gonna make up for it just by being the smartest person in the world." Don't don't put no dog's ass in front of me. Right. I'm not sniffing that. <laughs> I'm I'm going to Harvard. All right. <laughs> And you respect Mr. Peabody yeah. after that. So I think they captured that character very well. And uh, it could have been very easy to make him a one-joke thing. So I don't mind the movie adding dimensions to him. In fact, I was saying to myself, I hope they don't lay on the emotions too thick here because right. it's, it would really take away from the what, what was really dry wit in the show. Yeah, There were certain character designs that I really liked here. I think they did a great job, not only with Mr. Peabody, but Sherman I thought was well-designed. Now, having said all that... Mm-hmm. Everything that I thought was done well in this movie is balanced out by generic shit. Whenever they deviate away from keeping true to that show, they go into the most generic fucking desert they can find for a big studio, especially DreamWorks CG animation. That was the thing that that I noticed. Like During the early part when I was unsure about the movie and maybe not digging it so much, I noticed how like, wow, this is really sparsely populated. Like they are yeah. not putting a lot much work into the backgrounds and to the other characters. It's almost like 
is 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 it as if they were in a rush? Well, my problem is that while Mr. Peabody and Sherman, <laughs> they're true to the show, but they expanded on them. They took they took visual cues from the show. Yeah, and brought those characters into the CG world. Now every other character they had that's some stock shit that DreamWorks had. Pretty they much. They had if the, the, you know the, the design. Yeah, yeah the, the, the other the other humans from the contemporary humans. Yeah. Yes, they are. Like even down to you know Stephen Colbert as the voice of uh, Penny's dad. Like that that whole family was very cookie cutter. Yeah, Stephen Colbert and Leslie Mann they play Penny's parents and man that looked like something that they they took out of a crowd scene from another DreamWorks CG movie. I was almost like. I'm pretty sure this was in Monsters vs. Aliens. <laughs> exactly. Ever since Monsters vs. Aliens, all their they, movies they, starting to look the same. Yeah, they got a library and they just, they just plug them they in. They just pick them out. I mean, that, that Stephen Colbert's character was so nondescript. And Miss Grunion, I really hated that character. Yeah. I mean, the, her look. Yeah. I just, I, the, there were so many unique designs from that show that they could expand it on, take visual cues for the create, create, create a design of this movie that they well, didn't do. Well, it seemed like they saved it up for the historical figures. Like, like I thought uh, Leonardo da Vinci was great. And Stanley Tucci did a, a phenomenal job doing the voice for him. Oh, he did. He was, no, he was, he was wonderful as Leonardo da Vinci. And I also thought that they did everything that they had to put a, a lot of work into for the historic scenes, those were well designed. Yeah. Outside of that, I know I don't like it. they didn't give a shit. <laughs> but I, I, and there were other characters in there that 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 had great voice work from actors. I didn't think they the, the, the could have been capable of doing that. Lake Bell as as uh, Mona Lisa. Oh yeah, yeah, she was funny. Uh, yeah, that was cool. And and uh, everything in the in in the uh, with the king t- uh, that ancient in, Egypt in, in ancient Egypt stuff. Yeah, it was that that was cool. That was badass. Th- it was, but they could have done something with this music, man. Oh, Danny Elfman. Danny dude. Elfman, yeah. As, I wonder if you know, like Danny Elfman has disciples and uh, what do you call uh, 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 interns and apprentices? And I'm just wondering, like, maybe he gets them and just puts his name on stuff. Danny Elfman, he didn't write this shit, right? <laughs> he he. They said we need this done by a certain time. He was busy. He ordered this shit online at a website somewhere. <laughs> I refuse to believe otherwise. Because this is really. This is the most. It's, talk about generic. This is the most generic ass music. I I call it trapeze music. You know, I cut that kind of shit. Yeah. I'm like, this is. This sounds like anything from any other movie. Right. I would expect something from somebody who just started doing this True. shit. Somebody you never heard of, but Danny Elfman. Yeah. That this is lazy. It's lazy for. I can't do it. It'll no. be it'll be special for me, but him. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, no, you're right. You're right. While. Patrick Burton is doing the same Warburton. thing. Patrick, Pat, see, I told you. <laughs> I just want to see if you're listening. Patrick Warburton, he's doing the same thing, but he's fun. Yeah, he's fun. It, they, the character's fun. I mean, it is, you know, it, it is that kind of thing where, like, you used to be like, oh, it's Patrick Warburton. It's like, well, he yeah, was it's King, Patrick Warburton. Yeah, yeah, the Trojan horse and King, like a Memnon. And yeah. Stuff. yeah, he was, and his, that character's well designed. Now, out of all these characters that, they, that are well designed throughout this, the historical pieces of the movie, it's fun. I can forgive the music. I can forgive the characters that oh, we don't spend much time with those characters that 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 are not designed that well. So yeah. whatever. But then that movie, whatever he had going for it, they don't know what to do with it at the end. No. <laughs> they ball that shit up into just one predictable mess and throw that fucking they throw they throw it in the corner. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, you 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 you're ramping these things up and then you get to where like, okay, how do we end this? And it's like, well, you gotta go big. Yeah. Really? Yes. You gotta go big. The space time continuum is in trouble, and everything's going haywire. And everything. It, it, it's know. the end of Ghostbusters too. Yeah. <laughs> it's and I say Ghostbusters too because Ghostbusters was a pale imitation of of Ghostbusters two. It was a pale imitation of Ghostbusters one. Right. It had this ending where all the ghosts and shit get together, and New York is taken over. Now imagine a paler con- <laughs> uh, uh, imitation of that, where all the historical figures have to get together in time. They got to stop a hole from opening up over, over New York City just so you get fireworks at the end, a big light show. And, it's, uh, and at that point, you, I'm just thinking, wow, man, y'all done dropped the ball. You went to the opposite end zone, scored for the other team, and slammed that ball down. I didn't feel as strongly as you do. I do. I know you do. I know you do. I'm not even saying you're wrong. I'm just saying... For me, I was like, yeah, this is ending number six. And it was always a chance <laughs> it was going to go this way. It was never a point when I thought it, – it had never risen to a point where I was like, man, this is, this is so great and awesome. I'm looking forward to how they surprise me at the end. 
I don't know if that it ever got great. So having an ending that was like that and predictable and all, I was like, sure. It, it, it's in keeping with what I've seen so far. You were way more forgiving. I think if you put Maybe that much work into, into making this movie, even with its flaws, still making it that good and enjoyable throughout most of the film, you're going to get to the last 15 minutes and just don't give a shit no more. And I'm not going to say they didn't, they didn't give a shit. It's just, it's just rushed. Yeah, it just rushed it. Yeah, That's it is it. rushed. It's it's that, it's very rushed. That was the key word right there. It's just rushed, and you can feel it. Yeah, just, yeah, yeah, we got, yeah, we got to end this shit. It's rushed because you know what what it what it ends up being at at the end. There wasn't like they were dropping clues to that the whole time. Listen, brother, they painted themselves into a corner, and that paint never dries. <laughs> they still there trying to figure out what to do. I mean, it's, 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 I mean, okay, it's not as bad as like the ending with nonstop. Okay, but that's two different things. I mean, no, come no, on. I get that. But what I'm saying, it's not that kind of ending where it's like, well, we're going to pull out something that's going to shock all y'all. That's it, even worse. It, and I'll tell you why, because nonstop is a live action movie. All right? Right. right. Now, we're talking about a cartoon. Cartoons should be able to get away with a little something, but they can't, <laughs> they can't even get away with their own cartoonish ending. <laughs> you know what I mean? Come on. Just because you a cartoon on me, I'm going to let you get away with that shit. Mr. Peabody would never let this happen. He's too smart for this well, shit. <laughs> a, a Peabody and Sherman cartoon never got that far. Well, they should have thought about that before they started. Matter of fact, I don't even think there's a single episode where the Wayback Machine was malfunctioning. You're making excuses. I don't care. You're going you're gonna to commit to an hour and a half. You better figure that shit out before you Plus, start. Plus, man, you know, you know like I do. You, you've had nearly a, a half century of watching time travel movies. You know that by the time you get to the end of them, most of the time, if you sit there and start to unravel it, you're like, this doesn't make sense. I'm not talking about, I'm not going into goddamn Mr. Peabody and Sherman looking for time logic. <laughs> I'm it, just saying, be the creative. The cartoon's all about time. I'm not looking for time logic. I know they can do some shit that like live action <laughs> movies can't do. I'm just saying, just don't. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. So, how would you end the movie? See, don't even pull that shit right here. Now what? You, no, don't. Now, you what? know that's unfair. Now, <laughs> people, I want y'all to see what he's trying to do here. And I How want y'all to unfair? know. How's that unfair? I want y'all to know you ain't going to trick me into this shit. You asking me to write an ending in one minute. Now, you put me in a room for a week. I'll have you got there. I'll have you a Peabody and Sherman ending for your ass. And don't ask me to do it because I'm not going to do it. Because I'm not getting paid for it. <laughs> Man, you, you, you got a lot of excuses. <laughs> Hey, I, I ain't getting paid. I, I, I ain't have enough time. Martin, uh, it's, it's Mother's Day. Martin, you know what? You buy me a nice dinner and a beer, I'll get you a treatment. I ain't going to write the whole thing. <laughs> I'll write you a goddamn treatment, but that's it. I'm, uh, hey, I'm just, I'm just asking for a premise. Look, Negro, yeah, I ain't going to do this with you. <laughs> it ain't like I hate the movie. You, you so big and bad, you know how to write a better ending? You know what a better ending should be? I need to flip the shit on you there. You got to, yeah, hey, we, you write something good. You don't think it's that great either. It's okay. Let's write it together. <laughs> it's, it's, Come on, I'll, I'll do it with you. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm happy with it. Like, 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 like Samuel Jackson said, hand in motherfucking hand. Let's write this script. <laughs> you, see, now you're going to get out of it. You don't want to do it. You busy? I get it. Hey, man, I'm, I'm busy too. I'm okay with the ending. You, you, you say give it to me. I'm just going to write what they wrote. You're not okay with it. <laughs> no, you just said you weren't. You said you'd deal with it, but you're not okay with it. I difference. ain't angry about it. You should be. <laughs> It's because of this kind of shit right here that animated films will continue to be lazy at the end. Yeah, and Live action movies will be lazy. Oh my at God, the end. lazy at the end? They didn't, they didn't end with a dance number, but that's somehow true. when, when Gru does it and with Despicable Me, you're all right with it. Well, that's because they had an ending. <laughs> that ending. Yeah. You know what? Let's stop the movie so I can dance to Saturday Night Fever. That's I, the ending. I'm walking out by that point. <laughs> Why? Because I got my ending. <laughs> They can dance all they want to. Look, they can dance till four in the morning. I'm, I'm out. <laughs> hey, listen, man. I, I don't hate the movie at all. I, I actually enjoyed it. It gets more right than it does wrong. I really, the only reason why I'm complaining about the ending is because I enjoyed the movie so much. It, it is one of those things where it's kind of like you don't expect it to work at all. No. And then it does. And then it gets you on the train of like, oh, well, now I'm not judging it as the piece of shit I thought it was going to be. I'm judging it as the good movie it is. If you go see it and you pay full price for it because you took your kid on a Friday night, now I would recommend it as a matinee. I would too. I would say a full price may, may leave you a little... I'm telling you... Uh, feeling a little prickly. If you... I'm telling you to go see this and pay matinee price. But the reason why I would say you won't be disappointed if you... If, I mean, I'm sorry. Matinee, did I say matinee price? Yes, you did. Yeah, but if you pay full price... 
the only reason why I don't think you're going to be fully disappointed is because uh, a property like this, it, it truly does work on nostalgia. Yeah. And you're going to and you are going to sit there and you're going to say, wow, I remember this. I remember doing this. And the movie does. I mean, it tries hard to throw in humor for adults. I mean, not not just not just little shit that this is like, oh, that's cute. No, they get away with a masturbation joke in here. Oh, yeah. It's a couple of, of shit jokes that I actually thought were funny, too. And there are a couple of fart jokes that I actually thought, All yeah. right, you know what, for, I, I'm not above fart jokes. Like I said, if you do it clever, I'm cool with yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. You, you can see the one in the trailer where they fly out the, the sphinx, yeah. the sphinx <laughs> of the sphinx. <laughs> uh, yeah, they fly out. And I said, you know what, when you see the whole action sequence together, yeah, it ain't bad. Yeah. So yeah, I, I, my recommendation is to go catch a matinee, but if you pay full price on nostalgic level, that, it's not bad. Yeah, I, I, I feel that way also. Like, like For me personally, if I pay matinee, I'd be like, hey, you know what? That that was kind of cool. I'm glad I did. Now, if you are an adult who doesn't have an attachment to the show and you don't have a kid, uh, you might want to wait to to rent this. Yeah, yeah, don't. Yeah, exactly. Don't don't don't, don't take your big ass and never watch <laughs> Mr. Peabody and Sherman. Don't do that. Right. No. Now, I will say this much. First of all, the, the Alice and Janet, she can't get away from playing bitches, man. Even as a cartoon, <laughs> she's getting typecast like hell, man. I don't see her play, play bitches all the time. And there was a time when I did, but not, not so much. We've seen her about three times lately where she's played just a really asshole character. Well, now, in the way, way back, she wasn't. Oh, the way, way back. I didn't, uh, ah, look how you brought that back that? in. Well, the only reason why I bring up uh, Alice and Janet is because her character, Miss Grunion. Although I don't like that character in the movie, there's a little bit. Of, th- th- we're in a little moral quandary here. Mm-hmm. And I want to. I just want to ask you. I just want to get your opinion. Okay. I can kind of understand needing to take that boy away from that dog. Okay. And the reason why, Mister Peabody, most intelligent probably creature in the world. Yeah. Adopted a boy. Now, what if one day Sherman wants a mother? What's Mister Peabody gonna do? Do you think it's bestiality for? Mr. Peabody to admit to, 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 to fuck a human being. Okay. I, I, he going some kind of crazy ass I'm joke. not going. No, this is important. This is important because Mr. Peabody one day is going to want some companionship. And if he don't get it, they're going to take that boy away from Mr. Peabody because it's going to end up turning one of them priest situations where he's going to try and fuck Sherman. And I'm, I, you, see, well, 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 you see the, predict, predict, the predicament Mr. Peabody's in? He's, he's, too, he's, a, he's above a regular dog. He ain't going to do that shit. True, but he's he's gonna want a human lady. Well, Sherman, it's okay if he does because he'll have to do it doggy style. I don't get it, Mister. <laughs> I don't get it, Mister. Mister Thomas. <laughs> let, let, let me give you some death right there, brother. On that. Yeah. <laughs> Man, well, you still ain't getting out this trivia though. <laughs> Got some real quick trivia for okay. you. Okay. All right. Now, attempts to make a Mr. Peabody and Sherman movie has been around since 2003. Not that it's been around since 1959. Well, probably so, <laughs> but with this particular director, Rob Minkoff, he wanted to make... Now, his, his name's familiar. What did he do before? Was oh, it Empress New Groove? Or? I'd have to... I'll look him up in a little bit and let you know. Oh, okay. Now, what he, Stitch? Now, know. what he wanted to do here... You, this might make the movie even a little bit better for you. Okay. Because before we got to this version, he was planning on doing it CG live action, a la underdog Rocky and Blue. Oh, good lord! Where we gonna have live action characters? He's probably gonna have a real dog wearing glasses, doing that bad CG mouth. We we'll probably have a CG. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, have a real dog with doing that with the yeah. mouth. So, be thankful for the version you have right now. Could have been a lot worse. Now we were talking about who the creator of this uh, of, of this this show yeah. was. Actually, Jay Ward's daughter. Tiffany Ward, who gave her blessings on this movie, yeah, is listed as one of the creators too uh-huh. of the show. And she says that this movie actually captures the tone of the show very well. And I would say, yeah, for the most part, yeah. yeah. IQ tests have found that dogs are about as smart as Corey Martin, no. <laughs> if not smarter. No, both of those put together. In fact. No. <laughs> No, they say that the average dog can learn. Man, this is interesting. The average dog can learn about 165 words, about the same as a two-year-old child. Now, real smart dogs, the, the geniuses, they can learn about 250 words. Damn. We're talking about the Harvard graduate dogs right Yeah, there. I guess so. Here's something else that's interesting about the nature of dogs. The social life of dogs has said to be more like that of human teenagers. 
Really? Yes, because they are more interesting. In sex. They are more interested <laughs> in who's fucking who. Yeah. Yeah, and who and also who's moving up in the pack. Uh huh. So being a dog is pretty much like being in high school. Right. For the for your whole life. <laughs> I got a quiz for you. Let's see if you are as smart or close to it as Mr. Peabody or Sherman. I don't know. They're both pretty smart. All right. My first question for you, Martin. I ain't is, never met George Washington. Well, we'll see about that. I'm working on a time machine. You can be my boy. <laughs> Come along, boy. Boy is a white racist word. <laughs> well, that's good because I'm black. Uh, let's see here. Name just one. Of the top three breed of smartest dogs. Just one. Uh, Australian Shepherd. I'm going to give you another chance. Border Collie. God damn it, boy. Just think about it. What are you talking about? Th- th- those are the two smartest dogs. I don't know what your list says, but those are the two smartest dogs. Which one did you say again? I said Australian Shepherd and Border Collie. Actually, you have it right. <laughs> what? <laughs> well, you got it half right. German Shepherd, not Australian Shepherd. No, no, well, those are different dogs. Okay, well we got German Shepherds. I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give it to you halfway. Well, yeah, I mean, and you got bo- I, border collie. Yeah, because 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 uh, German Shepherd and Dobermans they're pretty smart, but they're under those two dogs. Okay, I, underdogs. See, that's, okay. Now, God damn it, <laughs> I gave it to see, the friend. Now stop shouldn't it. Shouldn't let me see that movie. You ain't no pee buddy, all right. <laughs> and th- there is one more. Actually, I was just testing to see how it, how committed you were to your answers. Okay, I want to make sure you just weren't guessing out thin air. Okay. How confident you were. You know what the other smart dog is? What's that? Poodle. Oh, yeah. Poodles are very smart. Yeah, that would have been my, my other answer. Beauty and brains. <laughs> and you go, <laughs> sexy and smart. All right, my last question for you is, who originally was going to be the voice of Mr. Peabody in the movie? David Hyde Pierce. <laughs> That's a good guess. I'll give you a hint. Avengers. Kel- Avengers? Come on, that should be easy, man. Samuel L. Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> Boy! <laughs> Bring your motherfucking ass over here. I told you quit fucking with my time machine. <laughs> Robert Downey Jr. Oh, yeah, yeah. That is it, man. That is it. <laughs> <laughs> well, have you seen that picture that they put up? Of Samuel Jackson, Jackson looked like a bulldog. And a, and a dog, yeah. <laughs> so maybe they had done that live action CG movie. They could have cast Samuel Jackson. All right, that is our review. That is our quiz. That is our trivia. And Martin, that is our review. And we are going to get out of here. People can reach me at kcoolmans at gmail.com. That's K C O O L M A N Z at gmail.com. Twitter at kcoolman. And just look me up on Facebook. I'm not too hard to find. No, no. 